Hello everybody, my name is Leo aka Noctef and today I would like to begin a little bit of a series, if you will, here on the channel where I'm going to go over everything you need to know to be a technical artist in Unity Engine. Now, full disclosure, the focus here is to be a technical artist when it comes to things like uh, shader development. I'm not going to cover things like automation, I'm not going to cover things like uh, rigging, I'm not going to cover things like uh, procedural generation, uh, editor tools, pipeline tools, things like that, which are all technical art stuff. But the thing is, um, I'm, I'm going to focus on shaders because it's the bare minimum you need to know to be a technical artist in the industry. If you know these things, you can land a job, right? You don't need anything else to land a job. Of course, the more you know, the better job you're going to land. But if you know how to do shaders, and if you know how to do VFX, you're going to land a job. It's very easy. It's 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 the bare minimum, if you will. Um, so yeah, let's go. So the first thing I want to cover is a lot of the principles, right? So those principles, they can be applied to Unreal Engine, Source Engine, Frostbite, any engine you can ever use, because in the end, shaders are all shaders and it's all math right like it doesn't matter if you're using shader graph the reality is that in the end uh you can apply those this knowledge to the material editor inside of unreal so even if you are not a unity developer this series is still going to be useful to you all right so let's begin so the first thing i want to cover here is the ones and zeros which is the basic knowledge of how images are formed so Let's go over here inside of Unity and let's go for one of our previous tutorials. I think let's go for the skeleton here. Uh, let me get... So one of our previous tutorials was... Okay, I, I can't find it. Let's, let's just... Okay, let's go for this texture right here, right? So if we analyze this texture, we can notice that it has channels. It has the R channel, the G channel, the B channel, and the A channel. So the thing we need to understand about textures is that they're all arrays of ones and zeros, right? So the images have channels that store the information of the three primary colors. And then you also have one extra channel for the translucency of those colors, right? The green channel, usually in most forms of compression, ends up with one extra byte uh, bit of information. Uh, so, and this is because of the, of the way that we compress images. We usually use the compression by block. So what is this? Let's, let's, let me try to show you guys here. Uh, so let's go into Photoshop and imagine that we have a texture. This is not going to be a perfect square, but this is a texture, right? So, What's going to happen here? Let's imagine that this texture is the texture of a heart that you're using for your game, right? So it's a heart and all of the inside of the heart is pink and all of the outside of the heart is just black. Let's say it's just black, right? So imagine you have this texture. Now, Here's what the compression algorithm is going to do. I'm going to use the color green here. I'm going to use the color white, actually. So the compression algorithm is going to go through each one of those pixels, and it's going to scan for colors that are equal, right? And it's going to turn them into blocks. So a great example of this, look at this. All of this part over here is all black information. So instead of storing all of those pixels, oh, pixel number one is black, pixel number two is black, pixel number three is black. No, what they're going to do is that they're going to take all of this part over here and just turn it into one big block of red, right? And the same goes for the pink. They're going to go, okay, so this is pink, this is pink, this is pink. Then they're going to block out pink parts. So all of this right here is going to be one big block of pink. And what this is going to do is going to take the image and 
uh, get all of the information and make it cheaper. So it, the, the file size is going to go down, right? So this is the DX um, 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 form of compressing things, right? So the direct X, if you will. So usually in video games, we use DX5, all right? And the reason why we do that, it's because they have a really good alpha algorithm. So essentially they can pack everything in the R, G and B channels and leave the alpha channel to be very um, high resolution. And for video games, this is important because usually the alpha channel is where you're going to store a lot of stuff. And also you have the green channel, which is a bit higher, uh, one, <laughs> which is a bit better, if you will, um, because it is literally one bit better, right? So you can also use uh, the green and the alpha channel to store extra information. So a great example of this is for PBR uh, rendering styles. So in PBR rendering styles, you can put, for example, uh, very sensitive information like the roughness map on your green channel. So now uh, the roughness of your model is going to have a slightly more uh, information, which is rather good. Uh, but this is usually the compress mode that we use for video games. Now let's talk a, a little bit about BC4. BC4 is the second mode of compression that is very used, widely used in video games. So BC4, they use a pre-multiplied alpha algorithm. So what this means is that um, they store a little bit of information in the R, in the G, and the B channel, but they also use the alpha channel to store uh, information about the RGB information. So what this means is that your alpha channel is not very good. This is why this is used in mobile mostly, because usually in mobile games, you're not gonna use the alpha channel much. Um, uh, the bad thing about the BC4 model is that it is very volatile when it comes to image sizes, right? So uh, there's also that going on. And finally, uh, those things right here, they are the way that the images are stored in the disk, right? This is like, uh, well, quote unquote, uh, the image compression that you're going to go through, but this is not necessarily the image format that the GPU is going to get. So what's going to happen is that the engine is usually going to convert those things into the same format, which is a DDS. So what is a DDS? DDS, essentially, the bulk of what you need to know is it's a GPU-friendly format, right? So this is what a, a DDS is. Uh, so what does the GPU need? So let's, let's go here into Unity and let's see the information that we have to manipulate in our image, right? So take a gander here. Uh, let me get this. So we have texture type. This is just presets. This doesn't really matter for us. This also doesn't really matter for us. So let's forget about that. sRGB, essentially sRGB is for color textures. Uh, it's prior, it prioritizes the first three channels. Uh, and you can store more information on those three channels. Uh, it doesn't treat each channel individually as a um, uh, grayscale bitmap. So uh, this type of information is kind of metadata that matters for the shaders and, and, and the decoding of the image, right? Um, also things like for non-power of true texture, this is mostly used for UI. MIP maps. MIP maps is... Um, essentially different levels of quality for the images uh, that the GPU is going to load. So if you're playing on the very lowest of graphical settings, it's going to take a lower version, uh, a lower resolution version of the image, right? Um, and then we, we also have like the, the way the mid maps are created, the wrap mode. Uh, wrap mode we already covered in one of our tutorials. Uh, essentially, I'm gonna cover this more about the UV map so we can ignore this for now, but essentially it orders if the texture is going to tile or not when it is panning over a UV set of coordinates. So all of this information in here, this type of information is not something you can store on a PNG. It's not the type of thing you can store on a, on a JPEG, on a TGA. So you need to store this sort of information on a DDS. So here's the key part about a DDS. Uh, the engine needs to turn the textures into a file that the GPU can read. A DDS 
is essentially a format that, that, that gets everything conveniently prepackaged pre -packaged so that the GPU can, can read that information immediately. So the DDS can store MIP map information, uh, can store tiling information, uh, per as is tiling, by the way, per as is tiling information. The MIP map can store uh, realm texture information. So if the texture is going to be used, uh, this is essentially uh, the priority of loading uh, that some engines uses priority of load Un uh, Unreal Engine uses this I don't think Unity uses this um, it can it can store UV bias so uh, you can uh, this is useful for um, what is it called hypertextures I don't know I don't know what it, what it's called but it's like uh, virtual virtual mega textures I don't know what it's called like the proper name um oh cube map info yeah cube map info too so the dds all of that information uh can be stored on a dds so that the gpu can promptly read it um so yeah another advantage of dds is that you can author your own dds textures so let's suppose that uh, you want to make a custom MIP map, right? The engine is not yielding good results on your MIP map. You can uh, make your own DDS textures, although that is slightly more complex. And uh, I don't think we're going to cover that. But just so you know, it is something that is doable. All right. So now we know that uh, textures have masks. Uh, textures have channels. And those channels are essentially arrays of numbers, right? Let's do a little bit of a proof of concept here. So what is a collar, right? Here we have the collar wheel. Everybody knows about this. So we can see here that the collar wheel has little things, right? Those little numbers. So the R is 255, the G 255, and the B 255. What does that mean? Well, essentially the collars are a range that go from zero to 255. So essentially, 255 means 100% intensity on the R collar, which is red. So let's grab a fully red collar. It's going to be 100% intense on the red channel and 0% intense on the green and the B. So let's do a little bit of a proof of concept here. Let's go and write the letter red, right? And let's do a little blotch of red here. So this is going to be 100% red, 0% green, 0% blue. All right, cool. Now let's do the opposite. Let's get this 255 and let's put it in the green channel. So now we have the opposite, right? Now we have something that is 100% green. Okay, cool. Now let's do the same for the blue, right? Let's do the same for the blue here, RGB. All right, cool. So now, if we were to go to the channels, you guys are going to see that the red channel, since it is 100% red, it's going to be 1. And 1 in shader development and in multimedia is represented by white. So the red is going to be completely white. The G and the B, since they're pure colors, they have 0% of the red. So they're going to be fully black because 0 means black. Same goes for the green. Now we're in the green channel, which means that it's 100% G. So once again, the G channel is fully white, while the B and the red are black. Same goes for the blue. Now, okay, so then what does that mean is that, well, if I want pure white, of course then it's going to stay white on all the, all the channels, right? So red, it's white, green, it's white, blue it's white if we add if we add 100 percent blue 100 percent green and 100 percent red at its maximum intensity we get white which means that by the same coin if we add those things with zero percent intensity we get black so let's go again and test it look at that black is going to be 100 percent black on all the channels all right, so this is how channels work. Very cool. So this means that we can do math 
uh, on those things because they're numbers. They're all numbers that range from zero to 255. Or in the case of shaders, we do a little bit of an abstraction that we say it's from zero to one, right? So if everything is from zero to one, this means we can multiply those colors uh, to create masks. We can subtract those colors. We can divide those colors. We can do any mathematical operations on those colors, right? Which is pretty cool. So this is like the, <laughs> you know, VFX Textures 101. This is how everything is kind of set up. And this is the bare minimum that you need to know to develop shaders. So uh, let's jump into a little bit of an example here, right? Let's do a little bit of an example here. So let me create a new folder here, uh, which is going to be basics. And let's create a new shader. Let's create a new... Um, Where's my shader? Let's create a new unlit shader. Oops. Let's create a new shader. It's going to be a shader graph. It's going to be an unlit shader graph. Let's just open this up. Cool. So let's do a little bit of a test, right? Shall we? So let's create a new node, right? Which is going to be a just a float node right, which is going to be zero. And now let's create a new node, another float node, which is going to be one. Okay, so let's plug the one into the base color. And you guys are going to see that if I make a material out of this, right, and I slap this in the ground, we have a fully white uh, ground. Now, if I go and multiply this one channel by zero, anything multiplied by zero is zero. So if we go in here, it's fully black. All right, cool. Now let's use a node called append, combine, combine, sorry. And let's say that this combine node is going to be one on the red, zero on the green, and zero on the blue. And now let's drag the RGB information and put it in the base color. And blimo, we have a fully red square. So this means that the same principles that we used to make these colors right here on those channels in Photoshop, they also apply to our shader development. So we can manipulate color and translucency information this way. All right, guys, that's pretty much it for the first video. This is a very basics, very basic introduction kind of video. But trust me, it's worth it because this sort of knowledge will come in handy in the future. In the next video, we'll be talking about UVs and all of the information that we can manipulate on a 3D model and how we use mathematical abstractions to draw things onto 3D models by usage of the UV channel. So thank you so much for watching and goodbye. Now I need to find my mouse because I lost it. Okay, I found it. Cool. Goodbye. <laughs>